Okay, next we're going to look at test statistics, and in particular, we're going to look at test statistics for the MRE case. So we're looking not at just binary, which is what we looked at previously, but we're looking at larger constellations. And we're going to focus on uh, what we can do with signal space. So signal space is going to be the big change in what we're examining now compared to what we did before. So we looked at test statistics in the first case in the linear sampling receiver. There was no sig signal space. Briefly, we looked at the correlator, the equivalence of the match filter and the correlator. But now we're going to push that further, look again at the test statistics, and we'll find that in signal space, the test statistics form is going to push us not just to use correlators rather than match filters, but it's also going to push us uh, to use more efficient receivers when possible. So let me explain to you how that happens. So what are the challenges when you use the MRE space? Well, we have to choose the symbol. There's many symbols. It's not just two. There's many symbols. We have to choose them. We have two strategies we've looked at. We can look for the most probable signal, uh, symbol, which means that we would maximize the a posteriori probability, or we could look for the most likely symbol. We can maximize the likelihood. Okay, so we have those two strategies, and that's all going to uh, come about uh, in the receiver. And what I'd like to show you is that the modulation format PSK, QAM, FSK, the modulation format is going to determine sort of the, the form of the receiver, the complexity of the receiver, the form of the receiver, and this, whether we use MAP or ML, is really going to determine the decision algorithm in the receiver, but not necessarily its structure. Then, what, why do we look at these test statistics? First, I'll show you why they're different for different modulations, how they're different for MAP and ML, but Eventually, we're going to take these results and we're going to use them to analyze performance. So now we're focusing on the receiver structure, and next we'll be for, uh, focusing on the an analysis. So two receivers. One is the MAP, which maximizes the a posteriori probability. And in that case, we know the a priori probability. The other one maximizes the likelihood, where we don't have this information. Both of them are looking for the closest symbol, right? So the basic idea here is that I have some constellation space, uh, I have some symbols in that constellation space, and then I have some received vector, and of course I'm going to choose the closest one. This represents the distance, and I'm trying to minimize the distance. So whichever one is closest to, that's what I'm going to choose. That's what these strategies uh, come down to. So. How do we use signal space to determine the structure of a receiver uh, when uh, we have this strategy? So we saw that briefly earlier, that we can take the signal space uh, to norm here and break it down into an inner product and the um, norm squared of each one of the component vectors. So for instance, in the maximum likelihood case, if we want to uh, minimize the distance, the symbol that is closest to the received vector, it would be equivalent to minimizing uh, these three um, elements. Okay, so we want the, the minimizing the sum. We have the length of the received vector, the length of each one of the um, symbols that we're considering, and then the inner product we would need to calculate. So these are the information we need in order to uh, make the decision about which one uh, is the most uh, likely or the most probable symbol. So let's think about receiver structure. What does that mean in terms of the structure of this receiver? First of all, um, the length of the received vector is the same in the decision process. So that's really irrelevant. We're, we're not going to find that at all. We don't need to calculate it. It doesn't change uh, finding the, the minimum distance. Um, let's assume that this part is known. I mean, it is known. We know the length of each symbol. Now we know the prior probability, this is the map case. And so really this part isn't in the structure, this part is really in the decision algorithm. Because in the decision algorithm, I'm going to uh, need this information, but it's not going to change from symbol to symbol. Here, we have the received vector, and this changes every time I receive a different uh, information symbol. So I'm going to have to, at each 
interval, symbol interval, I have to recalculate this. And then I'm going to use this as a weight, and I'm going to choose the one that's, that's uh, smaller, right? So this is how I, I go about. So what is the structure? The structure is I need this information. Every time a received vector comes in, I have to calculate each one of these for each one of the i's. So I have to calculate a bunch of inner products. So that means that here I have the received signal comes up, and I have multiple branches. I have one branch per symbol. And each one of the branch, I calculate this inner product. I calculate the inner product for each one of the symbols, and then I take that information and I throw it at the decision algorithm. And the decision algorithm takes that information about the inner products, and it combines it with what it already knows about the energy per symbol and the probability, uh, the a priori probability of each symbol, and it can make a decision. It can do the calculations for choosing the one that's closest. So, in this case, the, the statistics, the z's here, are each one of these inner products. And we know that the inner product is a correlator, right? So I multiply by a symbol, I integrate over a symbol interval, and that gives me the test statistic. In this case, the test statistic is this inner product. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Can we reduce the complexity of the receiver using our knowledge of signal space? And the answer is, of course, yes. And the only time, the only situation where we can indeed reduce the um, complexity of the receiver is when our signal space has a dimension which is smaller than m. So we know that this is possible, that it's possible to have a signal space with dimension n, where n could be smaller than m. In fact, we saw many uh, examples. PSK and QAM both had two-dimensional signal spaces. Even though we could get to 1024 QAM or even larger QAM, we could have a very, very large constellation, and yet the signal space is two-dimensional. So imagine, instead of having 1024 branches, Imagine if instead I had a solution that let me have just one branch per basis vector. Basis vector. In this case, the statistics, uh, test statistics are changing slightly. Instead of being the inner product, which each one of the symbols, now what I do is I have an inner product which each one of the basis vectors. Okay? So here I correlate with a symbol. Here I correlate with the basis vector. And of course, if uh, the basis, the number of basis vectors is much smaller than the number of symbols, I have a big reduction in complexity. It does not affect the um, decision algorithm much. It, 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 it doesn't, there's still an algorithm that has to make a comparison and pick the smallest, right? There, there's this optimization going on, and in case of a map, it's going to use the a priori probability. All that is still going on inside the decision uh, algorithm. It's just now, instead of having to uh, treat m different symbols, it, uh, statistics, test statistics that are going into the algorithm, of course, this only has two test statistics going in. Well, in the case of two-dimensional, but n only has n, n smaller than m, so it has fewer inputs. So, you know, the complexity of the decision algorithm should also go down. But structure-wise, you know, there's some calculation part, <laughs> and there's some with multiple branches, and the number of branches can be vastly reduced. So, how come we can do this? Well, why is it we can do this? Because I have two ways of calculating an inner product. I can calculate an inner product by its original definition, which is a correlation, but I could also calculate an inner product using the vector representation of the received uh, signal and each one of the symbols. So remember, these are vectors. Each one of them has coordinates, and if I just take the sum over the product of the, the coefficients, then that also gives me the inner product. So what I'm doing in this case is I'm calculating the coefficients of the received vector. Each one of the correlations with the basis vector gives me the coefficient here. If n is equal to 2, then there's just two coefficients. I have to do two inner products, get the coefficients of r. Then if I want to calculate the uh, test statistic, 
in, in, in the decision algorithm, I'm just, it, it, if I want to, you know, like minimize, um, find the SI that minimizes this expression, I just have to calculate the inner product, but I don't need it for the correlator. I have just N correlators, and then I calculate numerically the inner product using the coefficients. So N being smaller can be exploited because of the two ways that we can calculate an inner product either from correlation with the symbols or from the uh, coefficients in signal space. So again, it all comes down to find the closest symbol. Closest symbol is by evaluating each one of these distances. And these distances can be evaluated using just the coordinates in signal space instead of calculating um, a bunch of uh, uh, um, inner products. But of course, getting these coordinates requires some inner products, uh, but hopefully fewer of them if the basis is smaller. So that leads us to modulation formats determining the complexity or the structure of the receiver. Now, let's take MPSK. MPSK has two branches. It has an in-phase and a quadrature. Remember I said that the um, MPSK is a uh, two-dimensional signal space and that the um, signal um, basis vectors are typically cosine of the carrier and that's what we call the in phase and the quadrature would be the sine omega zero t. Now FSK, FSK has M branches and remember that's because you have a branch for every one of the symbols because each one of the symbols has a different carrier frequency. The frequency is changing and therefore the basis vector is changing each time. Here it's only the phase that's changing but the carrier frequency is remaining the same. Uh, so one basis vector is equal to a symbol. Every symbol is orthogonal from itself, therefore it can form the orthogonal basis. So we call these orthogonal modulations. So an orthogonal modulation always has M branches. So there's no savings in using the signal space representation uh, in terms of the complexity of the receiver. Now QAM is just like MPSK and that it also only has two branches, again an in-phase and a quadrature. In this case it's both the phase and the amplitude of these uh, carrier frequencies which might change, but the frequency itself stays the same, so there's only two basis vectors. So in the MFSK structure we would take the received signal and we would have M different uh, branches. So, you know, in this uh, form, I'm going to show you here is one with only two branches, and you have to be careful because if you don't see these ellipses that says, oh yeah, there's many branches in between, you may miss the really large difference between these two. Imagine 1,024 FSK, that's 1,024 branches, that's, that's pretty complex, not, not too common, but it could exist. <laughs> and so uh, it's important to realize uh, when you look at this uh, uh, block diagram that, th that these ellipses uh, are, are very significant. And of course I'm talking about MFSK but really there's an, uh, it applies to any modulation format which is an orthogonal modulation. We've shown orthogonality in terms of frequency. You can get orthogonality in other ways as well. So depending on the waveform you choose, if you choose waveforms with RHR orthogonal, you're, you're opting for this structure for your receiver. Now, very common to have QAM, MPSK. These are uh, modulation formats which by their construction are not orthogonal. They do not use orthogonality for their strategy of the communications. In fact, in these cases, they're just the two branches. And so the structure is very, very simple. Now remember, both of them can use MAP. Both of them can use maximum likelihood. Uh, and on both of them are having the strategy of choose the closest. The strategy hasn't changed, it's how we achieve the strategy that is different in these two cases.